So as you can hear from the video, and you can maybe see it in the tachometer, the car would get to a certain speed and just kind of hit a brick wall. For sure I thought it was some kind of valve float issue. I ended up measuring the springs on the engine, taking the springs off, bench testing the springs, resetting uh, the starting heights, and putting it all back together. This is definitely one of those learning videos, so stick around and you might learn something too. So right when I got home from my trip, I ended up one, placing an order for one of these. And this is going to check um, pressure off the seat on the valve springs on my car. So I actually saved all the paperwork from years ago when I um, set the spring up. I spec'd it all out myself. I went from a, a 1224 pack to a, what's on it now is a 1243. And this setup was dyno tested and didn't have any issues. I even have my starting target numbers written down. The only thing I don't have written down is um, individual measurements. And this tool says you should you know, verify your, your calibration on your tool. So I'll, I'll end up doing that, but I have to have a spring off the engine to do that. Uh, not too terrible. Um, I think it'll get me in the ballpark for how it's set up right now. This is how it looks on the engine. Obviously I removed everything to get at the rocker arm. Um, key part of the instructions right here, adjust the range, position 0 0.050 inside the roller tip. Okay, so I have this set up such that, um, it's, it, this is how it came out of the box. So I, I'm inside the roller tip, uh, probably by a little bit more than 0 0.050. Um, which will give me less leverage on the valve spring. I got this all lined up. It looks like it's crooked, but it's not. I'll pull on this very lightly until the valve just starts to move. Let's see if I can get that in there. So right about there, the valve starts to move. So by feel, it's about right there which is much lower than what I had this set up at I was targeting 200 pounds but that was with a different gauge um, so you have to kind of take that into account too but I think this is far enough off that I'll just pull these apart and have them uh, test out on a bench tester just to verify so I got this tool set up it's uh, something I got off of Amazon but it's pretty it looks pretty sturdy it can push the spring down just fine. Uh, well, that one looks kind of interesting. Looks like it. I might need a lash cap on this engine. But um, air pressure, we're going to pull the springs and see what they test out at. So I decided to pull a couple more. Um, this one is measuring about 2.015. That's the exhaust in number three. I might have pointed this out before, but they're. There's some evidence of some valve float. It's just burnelling. Doesn't look terrible. Um, this one has just a very light bit of it too. Uh, not so much on the exhaust. But I got lash caps on order, like I said. I'll do one more for uh, reference measurement and we'll have four springs to test in the bench tester. So I borrowed this spring tester for my buddy to do the bench test. And uh, we have four springs off the car and a pack of 16 springs that are brand new. Um, the way that this works, and I'm going to test every single one of them, is that you have to have your spring height plus your retainer thickness. And that's your going to be whatever your target spec is. So my install height spec is 1.9 at 240. I'll be targeting one uh, point. Um, I'll be targeting 1.990 on this machine because my retainer thickness is 90 thou. So I'll run, run it down. I have everything zeroed out, ready to go. Um, first, I'm going to find out where this binds at with this um, retainer. The inner spring actually binds before the outer spring. Um, the spec on this spring at coil binds 1.070. 
uh, I think with this retainer, I'm, I'm binding uh, before that height. So it's good to check what your actual bind is, otherwise you're gonna crash your valve train. So I'm watching the pound, and when that, when that shoots up a lot, like that's my bind shot up a lot. So I'm at about 1.210. Uh, you subtract 90 from that, and that's going to give you uh, 1.12, I think. Open pressure is at, at installed height. And I'm going to go to 1.290. The gauge reads uh, six point or six hundred seventeen pounds, and then I'll back it up to your to your uh, seat height or um, seat pressure, which is going to be one point nine ninety. One point nine ninety. We're at we'll call that two thirty five. I just took the this cover off. This is the passenger side. I'm just kind of visually looking, wiggling stuff around. This one is is pretty pretty loose. You can see I I set these up pretty pretty tight. 16 cold. When this thing expands up, it, it's between 20 and 22 hot. But I can get a 30 under here. That's cold. So there's something happening that you know. Makes things a little bit more interesting. So one thing I try to do when I do my valve lash setting is just mark it when it's set and measured. This one's in the way, way back. There's almost no way to get a marker on it, but the ones in the front all had marks except the problem one. Um, who knows? I mean, maybe I mismarked it, but the the adjust the the lock was tight and um, gives me enough reason to pull it the rest of the way apart. So I'll end up taking the manifold off just to check uh, to see if there's any, uh, if there's a pounded out bushing in the lifter on the other side. I really don't think there's anything going on, but I'm not going to uh, risk it. We'll just pull the manifold off and go from there. Um, the passenger side head was set up or not set up, but it, it's either worn or the install heights certainly are a lot higher. Um, and the pressures are a little bit lower. So I'm going to go with uh, reshimming and reusing the springs that I have because they're still um, close enough to spec. And we'll get it back together and see if that was our problem. It looks too bad. It's pretty clean inside. All my screens are still in place. I can't remember if it was this one. This one I'd have to look at back at the video, but we'll take one of these off and see if the roller's still got a bushing in it. Let's see if I can get this out here. Oh, that sucks. So I got these out. That is top. They go in that orientation. So this one would have been the suspect one. Um, trying to do this one handed, but I think we're fine. Yeah, it's not any more play than the rest of them. It's actually um, feels like new still. So I probably didn't set them uh, or set that one correctly in spring. I'm surprised, but. I guess it's possible. I pulled a couple more. Everything looked fine. I uh, had to take all the springs off to get the rev kit out. And this is the last spring going in. So if you ever had to deal with this, a door spring tool is my tool of choice for this. So I'm just trying to get these uh, lash caps on. Uh, I'm just going to do double check the geometry. If you look at some of these other ones here, I'm there's some, uh, some of them are beat up pretty bad. These ones are beat up probably the worst, but. The tops of these valve stems are so beat up, I can't get uh, the lash caps to just slide on. So I'm going to have to, uh, I worked them with a file a little bit 
Now I'm gonna bust out the sand roll and I'm gonna just, you know, put these tape around there. That's like get a little grit in your engine. And use a slow drill. Try to um, keep the debris to a minimum and take a little material off to get it to fit. So this is after a test drive, I'm pulling this out just to get a baseline of where we're at. Roughly 200, which is kind of what I was targeting. that drive I turned my attention to the ignition system I ended up changing the box the coil neither one of those changed anything and then I went into changing spark plugs and uh, distributor cap check the simple things first I should have ohmed out these wires but I didn't and it wasted a lot of time I did find some things that uh, needed to be addressed like the lash caps I could have saved so much more time of course, after I figured it all out, I ended up going for a test drive, and I don't have the original test drive captured because I was just frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> 